and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be talking about this pretty vulgar translucent setting powder called the Powder Room Matte About It. I've been using this for about a month now. Oh, why did it suddenly get dark in here? <laughs> I've been using this for about a month now and have formed some definite opinions about it. So in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this powder. I'm going to show you me applying it and I'm going to give you my review of it. And as always, there are going to be timestamps down below so that you may watch any part of the video you wish. So let's first talk about this product what it is, all of that fun stuff. So this is Pretty Vulgar's Translucent Setting Powder. It comes in this plastic little container with a little pink puff to apply it with. If you buy this in Canada at Sephora, it is going to cost you $39 Canadian. You do get 25 grams of product in here, and this is uh, cruelty-free and vegan. The description of this on Sephora's site is that it is a translucent loose powder that sets foundation with a matte soft focus effect. The Powder Room is a weightless skin smoothing translucent setting powder that locks your makeup into place. Simply dab the powder onto your face with the included soft delicate puff applicator to keep your makeup looking fresh and flawless all day long. This powder will effortlessly enhance the look of your foundation by blurring and filling the look of fine lines without leaving a trace of color. This pore minimizing silky smooth powder was formulated to absorb oils, reduce shine and provide your skin with a soft matte finish. It's made without parabens, sulfates and phthalates. As I mentioned before, it is vegan and cruelty free and also gluten free. It does say you can bake with this powder. It also says you can dust it lightly all over your face to get a setting effect. The main ingredient in this, the first one on the ingredient list is talc. I did do a video previously where we talked about talc as an ingredient and that there may or may not be issues associated with it. I'm gonna link that video down below. Not all setting powders um, have the first ingredient being talc. A lot of them do, but not all of them. If you like the aesthetic of Pretty Vulgar, this does fit in with it. It's kind of a vintage look. It's got the birds on there. You know, it does have the little pink puff, which is very cute. Uh, and if you look at the powder itself, you know, it's not a white powder. It is sort of that yellowish color um, that a lot of people do find provides a little bit of brightening, almost like a banana powder kind of look but it is sold as being translucent so that it shouldn't lighten or deepen your base makeup concealer foundation at all. I think now would probably be a good time to go into the video of me applying this, showing you how it works, and then I'll be back with my thoughts. I've put on a fairly dewy foundation. It's actually a Rimmel BB cream, and I'm going to zoom in and then put on my under eye concealer and then just set my face as well so you can see what this looks like in use. So here we are up close. Let me just get the concealer on. So I'm using my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. This is in the brightener version. I'm getting close to the end of it. Sometimes I'll blend this out with a brush or a sponge, and sometimes, like today, I'll just use my finger. Hmm. Something is not getting along on my skin. I have flakiness above my lid there, but that's okay. That's not where we're focusing. So the brightener is quite light and pink. So it really does brighten up under the eyes almost a little too much as compared to the color of my foundation. But there we go. Now I'm going to do part of my face with the puff and then also part with a brush, which is usually how I would do. So I'm taking this out and you can see, you know, the powder that's clinging there. So I'm gonna take the part with the most powder and set that under my eye. And I just need to get my mirror here. And then I'm going to pat it around my face a little bit and then swirl it in. So there it is on half my face done with the puff. And I'm just going to use this powder brush for the other half of my face. Just kind of get a bunch on there for under my eye. 
and swirl around. I do feel at least for my skin that this does dry out under the eyes a little bit. Um, and I'll just get the rest of my makeup on and then I'll be back to give you my thoughts and review on this product. My review of this product is that I am not a fan. However, this product does have 100% people recommend five out of five on Sephora's site for I think probably around 50 reviews or so. So there are people who really like this. So let me break down a little bit what I don't like so much about it, but who I think may really like this. I'm always a little bit harder on products that are more expensive because I think for a more expensive product, it should be doing significantly more than something that you can just buy at the drugstore. <laughs> uh, and being a $39 product, you know, I take that into account when I'm thinking about it. So let's start out just with how this looks. Um, you know, some people really like this aesthetic. It's not really my thing. I think it's a little cheap and kitschy, um, but I wouldn't really care about this. I mean, it has the sifter in there, that's all fine. Uh, but I am a little annoyed at this thing. So, you know, it's very cute, uh, but I don't find it works very well. If you actually look close up at this, it's very, long fur on here. Like, this isn't luxe. This looks like you should be making a stuffed animal out of it. And because it's got those longer hairs on there, I find it picks up powder really inconsistently. Um, and you don't have a lot of control over how much it's picking up or where it's picking it up. So you may have seen when I was applying it that you sort of get little streaks of it in places and then you kind of have to rub it in. I just feel like if they had done the same kind of cutesy thing, but with a velour puff, that it would give you a little bit more control over how much powder you're using, how you're distributing it, and would kind of give you the ability to like press it into your face without it sort of all gathering in one area. So I feel in a sense for this puff, they really put form above function. They went for cutesy above actually having a product that did the best it could do. So taking this out of account, so you know, let's say you're not using the puff, you're just using a powder brush, which is totally fine, then you know, what do I think of it then? Before I looked at any reviews of this product, which I actually only just did before I sat down and started filming this, I, you know, just use it for a while and see what I think. And I never felt like I had the best makeup days with this powder. So under my eyes, using it to set under my eyes, it did not particularly smooth. And in fact, it made my under eyes look a little bit more dry than it did look with some other powders. Like there's some powders that I set with under my eye and I can just feel that smoothness. You don't feel that with this powder. It doesn't feel like it's doing that smoothing. I didn't, I mean, there was a little bit of pore blurring that I saw with this, but not as much as I've seen with some other powders. And I felt a little bit like using this powder was taking away a little bit of the coverage of my makeup and made it look just a little bit cakier than I wanted it to look. So if I am going to be spending the money on a translucent powder or a setting powder, a loose powder that is from Sephora and I'm paying a little bit more for it, I need it to do something that justifies that little bit more. So I've done a review before on the Tarte Smooth Operator Powder, which is a finishing powder, which is a little bit different. It's not made to set your makeup, but powder is powder in a lot of cases. And that one, it was like, it blurred my pores like crazy. Uh, the Ciate powder that I reviewed recently, it had sort of a matte effect, but it was like, a luminous matte it it just it allowed still sort of the any luminosity from my foundation to still show through and I quite like that so I've had powders before where they just add something to my look and this didn't add anything and if anything made it look a little too dry on my skin now saying that I think that's why some people really like this powder. If you have oily skin, if you have the kind of skin where it's too glowy or 
oil starts to come through after a while. This, I think, does a good job of absorbing oil. I think those are the people who really like this are the ones who really want that matte, matte look because they tend to err on the side of being oily. That's not me, especially not in the winter. I have sort of combination skin. Definitely with certain foundations and in the summer, I will start to get, you know, oily in my T-zone by the end of the day. But I just also find that this doesn't look nice from the time I put it on. It's just a little too much. It doesn't smooth as much as I would like, it doesn't blur as much as I would like, and it makes me look a little too matte. And for the price, I need it to do a little bit more than it has been doing. So, you know, if you love this aesthetic, and if you are an oilier kind of person, then maybe this would be good for you. Uh, but for me and my slightly older combo skin, who doesn't find this to be what I really love, it's just not for me, unfortunately, because I've tried some pretty vulgar products that I really like, like their gel liner. I've tried some of their products that I really don't like, like their blush, and some that are kind of okay, like their palette. But unfortunately for me, this just doesn't do enough to justify the price. So those are my thoughts on this powder. But as always, I would love to hear what you guys think because I am only one gal with one kind of skin. So let me know in the comments your experience with this powder. Do you love it? Which translucent powders do you really love? Which ones are worth the money? Which really bargain ones work really well? Leave all of that in the comments down below. I do try to respond to every comment that I get. Uh, that is it for me for today, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye!